that was it. We're through Escape from Butcher Bay. It was an old game. It was a bit difficult at some points. It was a bit tedious at some points. And a lot of trial and error at a lot of points, actually. Which was um, a little bit disappointing. But all in all, I'd say it was an entertaining game. And it enriched the Chronicles of Riddick. Well, mythology or universe or however you want to call it um, it was actually pretty interesting well that there were only a few story parts where it really say they had an impact on the lore especially the part where Riddick got his eyes and we still really don't know how he how he or she at the guys at that point did it I mean he was at that at that doctor's place and suddenly this voice was in his head this female voice and uh, afterwards he had the eyes when in the movies he always stated that he got the eyes um, by a surgery and in, in butcher bay uh, that he paid like 20 menthols menthol cigarettes for uh, the operation which actually never happened as we just saw, not just saw, but as we saw through, in, uh, as we saw through the playthrough. Uh, during, so that was actually what I was looking for, as we saw during the playthrough. So yeah, I'm a bit confused right now who that voice was and what actually happened there. But there's a second part to play, um, the Assault on Dark Athena which uh, I think came out about five years later. So I'll definitely give it a play as well, because I really want to know now how the story continues. Uh, I was told that the second part also takes place before the first Riddick film. So yeah, let's see how they work this out and if we get more answers on who the mysterious voice was oh, that Riddick had in his head and that gave him the night vision. Um, thanks for watching everyone. I think I'll stop the stream right here. I'll just wait until um, the credit rolls are over because maybe there's an additional scene. You never know. So that's what I'll just wait for. And um, afterwards, I'll shut down the stream. Yeah, thanks everyone for watching, not only on stream, live on stream, but also for those people who um, watch the Let's Plays, maybe right now, on YouTube. Breaking the fourth wall here. Yeah, I think it was quite interesting a genre mix. I mean, mostly it, it wasn't really a, a first-person shooter because you didn't actually shoot as much. I mean, there was this one sequence um, in the upper cell block where um, we managed to get our DNA print into the system so we could actually use all the rifles that guards were dropping but then, when we dropped down into the mines, there was a really, really, really long part where we couldn't use almost any guns. So it was mostly fighting with your fists or fighting with um, shivs or, um, or screwdrivers or, yeah, or then uh, later on even um, a club. But yeah, that's, that, that was a really long part in the gameplay where we had to do that. And then a lot of walking around, walking from A to B, walking from B to A and back. So that's that was, like I said, a bit tedious there. So I think um, designers could have made that a little bit better. Um, there were a lot of... Um, there were a lot of um, missions I didn't even complete. Mostly because of that, because I didn't want to walk around forever searching for the necessary part that just could have been anywhere and um, thus lengthen the game time. But I, I guess you could, of course, do that. Also, trying to get all the cigarette packages in order to get all the goodies um, in the menu, because for every 
cigarette package that you found, you would get um, maybe a drawing or maybe a video even, but I think mostly mostly production drawings and stories and whatnot. So yeah, but that was not something I wanted to do right now. So I just wanted to play through, not really as fast as possible. I think that wouldn't give the game enough credit. But um, yeah, probably quickly, not being distracted from any side missions or anything, because you didn't really need them. I mean, the side missions didn't really do you any good. Uh, you could earn some money by doing the side missions. I mean, I almost had every weapon that really was important within the game. So yeah, there, there was not really much to gain. I could have gained more um, dollars, more money, but the money only is only good for buying stuff, mostly cigarette packages. Uh, that I didn't really want to buy. <laughs> so yeah, I, I didn't really have to do the side missions. But they might have been interesting. You never know. Um, but uh, again, I think the game is so old and now after I've seen the main story and got through everything, I don't think I really want to play this game once more in order to get all the details figured out and everything. It was mostly uh, just because I was really interested in the story and um, the game received very well um, reviews back when it came out. So yeah, I just wanted to give it a try. And of course it has aged, so you can't compare it to today's titles. And it might have been a good game back then. I still think it's very enjoyable and entertaining. But yeah, as I said, it, it has aged and um, a lot of things were a bit problematic, like the AI of enemies. Sometimes they were really stupid, sometimes they were... I mean, seeing you even with the smallest pixel, you were um, looking around the corner uh, and just, just a small ray of light was even shining at you. I mean, I was almost completely in the dark, but a small... A small little spark of light was shining at me and the guy was just barely behind uh, the corner and still he was seeing me shooting at me, alarming all the other guards and maybe even caused me to die, so that was sometimes a bit ridiculous. But then again, of course, sometimes people just stood behind crates, never coming forward. I was just shooting them with my gun, uh, with my gun holding uh, over the crate and they never did anything to just move to the left, move to the right or something, trying to shoot me. So yeah, that was these typical kind of problems you often have with 3D games where the AI just has some problems figuring out what to do because of the pathfinding or whatever. So that was also pretty typical here. And then sometimes I think, well, I mean, I played it on normal, uh, and I'm not such a good FPS player, I have to admit that. I don't play FPS games very often. So and that also was a bit difficult for me to play, but, but I'm, I'm an old gamer, so I have experience with a lot of gaming genres and also the FPS genre. I mean, I played a lot of um, shooters back on PlayStation, back on the PC. I um, played the old Doom titles. I played uh, 13 back on PlayStation. I played uh, Time Splitters 1 and 2 and 3. No, only 2 and 3. Only 2 and 3. But I played Time Splitters 2 multiplayer a lot. So, yeah, I mean, I have some experience with first-person shooters. Mostly with uh, controllers, not so much with mouse and some um, keyboard, but that's why I actually decided to play this game using my controller. I actually enjoy playing a lot of games using controllers. Uh, I just think it's more fun. Of course, there are some genres uh, that really benefit from playing with a mouse and a uh, keyboard, and some genres that actually only really can be played using a mouse and a keyboard because otherwise it's just problematic to get all the things done in the same amount of time as you can do them using a mouse and a keyboard so yeah like like RTS games games like Starcraft games like um, what was it uh, Age of Empires and all these games they just don't make sense 
Uh, I mean, there even is a console version of StarCraft, right? Uh, I think on the Nintendo 64. I've never played it, and I don't really want to know how this is uh, how this plays out. And like I said, I guess you can do it, but it's it's just so ineffective. Uh, so why would you? And uh, yeah, and then of course there's the shooter genre, and um, of course a lot of shooters can be played more precisely using mouse and keyboard by people who actually can play it. But um, yeah, I mean, it's still possible to play these kind of games using uh, a controller. And maybe some aiming help in order uh, to get as accurate as a player with a mouse and keyboard. But yeah, I guess nobody who'd ever wanted to be a pro gamer in FPS games would want to play uh, with a controller. They'd all prefer a mouse and keyboard. So, but yeah, this, this game was playable and whenever I can, I like to play my games using controllers because it's just my preferred way of gaming. It's just, just pretty relaxing. You can just lay back. You don't have to sit next to your table um, always upright, always concentrated, always focused. Um, but you can just lay back, play the game from behind, and it's still uh, it's still not um, not something that's easily done. It's it also depends on the game. But yeah, th there might have been some problems with aiming and shooting in this game that were just caused by the by using a controller and not using a mouse and keyboard. But uh, I preferred it that way, anyways. And uh, yeah, like I said, sometimes there were some problematic things, um, especially with uh, when the game n when the game never told you whether you could avoid an enemy or not, because sometimes there were situations where you actually had to avoid enemies, and then sometimes like 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 the scene where I was uh, at the spaceport and um, almost so close to the spaceship. And uh, I really thought I would have to avoid these two enemy um, riot guards that uh, are normally really difficult to, uh, to take out. So I really thought I could just avoid them, just shoot down the uh, human guards and then try to run for the ship. But I just couldn't do it. I had to kill everybody on the platform in order to get the cutscene. And there was also a scene, uh, an ambush right at the beginning of the game, or not, not right at the beginning of the game, but pretty close. I think it was in my first session, uh, the first session I played, where uh, at the end there was an ambush um, where I had to kill like four guys. And after that, a riot guard came down with an elevator and you had actually had the possibility to hide and then just sneak out past him to the elevator and then they even showed the button press elevator button but as as, as often as i tried it you couldn't you couldn't do it i was just surprised i was i was just confused if it was just the lazy controls or if my controls were broken or what what had happened and then i finally figured out no you had to kill the guard before you could start the elevator and i would have liked some sort of message there where they just said no you can't uh, activate the elevator unless you killed uh, the riot guard and then you would have known and so i tried it for like four or five times before i just realized okay obviously the game doesn't want you to do it i mean of course you can be quicker realizing that but still uh, it would be easier to just do that and more comfortable. It's not, it's not only about easier, it's just about comfort that doesn't take anything away from the game, not even the hardness, because I would still have to beat the guy, which is actually the hard thing to do. So it wouldn't take from that. It just gave me more comfort and gave me a little bit more lead um, to, um, yeah, to help me out at that little stage, just giving me necessary information I can't otherwise get because it would just be logical to avoid him and just get into the elevator and press it and everything. Yeah. So why not do it if you can? Yeah. So that was a bit strange. Yeah, 2004 Escape from Butcher Bay, 2009 Assault on Dark Athena. So that's probably the next game I'm going to play, or maybe I'll just uh, maybe I'll just squeeze another game between 
those two. Yeah, I think I'll probably do that. I have